Welcome back, and thanks for joining us today for episode 66 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. As always, we have a lot to go over today, so let's dig in. Starting things off on Friday, the next section for the second mega bay was staged at the build site. These sections will make up the second tier of the bay. Making creative use of telehandlers, crews work to remove dents from the unused methane tank closest to the launch pad, which were damaged at liftoff from the integrated flight test. The methane tank for Booster 11 was removed from the Mega Bay welding turntable on Saturday morning, making the start of a busy day at the build site. A few hours later, the Mega Bay cranes picked up the methane tank and placed it on top of Booster 11's LOX tank, completing assembly of the vehicle's major structures. Workers continued clearing Starship hardware out of Tent 3 this week, starting with the removal of Ship 33's bare nose cone section. After the welding turntable was freed up and made free for new ring segments, Booster 12's common dome was moved into the Mega Bay. With all of the hardware staged and ready to go, the next section of Booster 12's liquid oxygen tank was stacked. On Monday, the last nose cone was removed from Tent 3. This incomplete nose cone destined for Starship 34 still needs the internal stringers that support the flaps and header tanks in flight. Late in the evening, a large section of water pipe for the deluge system was delivered to the launch site. Stacking and assembly of Starship 29 was completed on Tuesday evening in the high bay, capping off a somewhat quiet day. Wednesday morning, the new tower elevator was finally installed and operational, ferrying workers between the tower's two major service levels almost two months after the failure of the old elevator. Crews could be seen struggling to place rebar into one of the prepared piling cases, resorting to pushing the cage down with the help of an excavator. Over at the build site, the first pieces of steel were erected, sending construction above ground for the first Star Factory expansion. Crews have been working quickly, and the first pre-assembled roof section for the new factory building was lifted into place later that day. A pair of new tank stands was delivered to the launch site. These stands will support one of the upcoming horizontal tanks, which are being brought in to replace the current vertical propellant storage tanks. Shortly before midnight, Booster 12's liquid oxygen tank was joined with one of the tank ring sections and stacked in the mega bay, beginning the booster's assembly in earnest. As the clock ticked over into Thursday, the orbital launch mount work platform was removed from the launch site, rolling down Highway 4 on an SPMT. A potent summer storm rolled into Starbase in the morning, kicking up massive blinding swirls of dust before being washed away by the heavy rains that began to fall not long after. As the rain fell, one of the flapless nose cones, which had been brought outside earlier in the week, was unexpectedly returned to Tent 3 and shuttered inside. A new vertical storage tank with a large pipe flange at the base and a smaller one at the top arrived at launch complex later that morning. With the storms long gone, the second pre-assembled roof section was lifted into place on the Star Factory extension, bringing the structure to two-thirds of its design width. As the factory work was ongoing, Ship 31's nose cone was also moved back inside Tent 3, and the doors once again closed shut. Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography performed another Starbase flyover on June 7th, allowing us to get another overhead update on what is happening at SpaceX's facilities. Starting off at the Massey's test range, the concrete for the presumed booster cryo station has now been poured. Interestingly, on the new pad, we see a different layout than we have seen at other booster parking spots, with this new one appearing to have just eight places for the booster stands to be bolted down, unlike the 12 we have seen previously. There is also an interesting metal circle on the ground next to the new pad. Let us know what you think in the comments what this might be. Finally, for Massey's at the tank farm area, the pedestals and foundations for another pair of horizontal storage tanks have now been completed. Moving down Highway 4 to the Sanchez site, steady progress continues with the assembly of the corners for the new Mega Bay. With the first two sections of the second level already at the build site, four sections at Sanchez means that SpaceX is roughly halfway through the pre-build of the third level of the new bay. 
Meanwhile, tarps and umbrellas around the parts of the water-cooled steel base for the OLM indicate that crews are still hard at work preparing these pieces for installation. Moving over to the build site at the new Mega Bay, the LR-1300 has been moved out of the center of the building, likely to make room for the LR-11000 when it begins installing the prefabricated corner sections in the near future. On the ground next to the LR-1300's new location, we can see steel for assembling the stairs that will go in the corners of the building. Over at the first phase of the Star Factory expansion, the concrete slab continues to expand and the presumed press pit is looking noticeably cleaned up. Towards Highway 4, the debris from the demolition of Low Bay and the propulsion building has been cleared away and the neat and deliberate disassembly of the ground fabrication building is progressing steadily. Down Highway 4, the launch site continues to see a flurry of activity as SpaceX works to prepare for the next launch. At suborbital pad B, the crane has been disconnected from ship 25 and road closures have started to appear on the county website, indicating that a static fire of the vehicle is likely in the near future, although these road closures have recently been canceled. On the former landing pad, more and more piles are being placed to support additional horizontal storage tanks as SpaceX works to phase out the vertical tank farm. Towards the bottom of the image, many sections of prefabricated piping sections and new high-pressure gas canisters show that while SpaceX is pushing forward at full speed with the new system, there is still a lot of work yet to come. Two long arm excavators have been busy around the orbital launch mount, clearing dirt and exposing the tops of the new friction piles, likely in preparation for additional concrete that will integrate all the piles into one cohesive foundation for the new water-cooled steel base. Sheet piles can be seen on the tower side of the mount as well as next to the concrete pipe vault coming from the tank farm. These sheet piles are likely a precaution to protect the base layers under the concrete vaults from collapsing into the excavated area and compromising their structural integrity. After nine days in space followed by a successful re-entry and splashdown, Dragon Capsule Freedom returned to Port Canaveral on Saturday, ending the Axiom 2 mission on board SpaceX's recovery ship Megan. Early on Sunday morning, the crew access arm at Launch Complex 39A was retracted ahead of the launch of CRS-28 to the International Space Station. A short time later, and beating the odds of the forecast at 15% chance of go, Falcon 9 lifted off from SLC-40, carrying 22 Starlink V-2 minis into orbit for the Starlink Group 6-4 mission. After the launch, the crew access arm at LC-39A was extended after CRS-28 was postponed to Monday. Shortly before noon on Monday, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 lifted off on its fifth overall mission, carrying Cargo Dragon into space for the CRS-28 mission to the ISS. Early on Tuesday morning, the transporter erector Strongback was lowered for return to the horizontal integration facility at the end of the road. Making an afternoon return to Port Canaveral, Bob returned with both fairing halves following the Starlink Group 6-4 launch. Not much later, the Crosby Skipper made its own return to port with Just Read the Instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1078 in tow, having finished their part in the Starlink 6-4. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.